Let's talk about private time in prison because you have hundreds or thousands of men in one small area. And yes, there are homosexual relationships, but for the heterosexual men, how do they get any privacy? How do they get any time? So let's start with the dormitories. And I was only in a dormitory for the 10 months at the end of my sentence. And I'm so grateful for that because dormitories are inhumane. You have bunks stacked on top of each other, next to each other. There's no privacy. There's no dividers. You go into the bathroom, you have an open bank of showers. There's no divider between the toilets. You're just open everywhere in there. There's not a single spot you can be away from somebody else. So obviously it's hard to find some kind of privacy. So every now and then you'll go to the bathroom at two in the morning to take a piss and you'll see that somebody's hung a sheet up across the shower because they're in there taking care of personal needs because that's the only time they can get that. Where some guys just go kind of like wide open. They'll hang a sheet in the shower like while other people are in there. But they'll like have one on one side, one on the other. They'll pay the laundry man to get extra sheets. And they'll be like, look, just leave me alone. Don't come in here. And it's so inhumane to think about having men needing to do that just to have a moment to themselves. Just to have a moment of privacy. Like even if they weren't masturbating, if they were just wanting a moment to themselves, that shouldn't be something you have to like lie, cheat, and steal and break the rules to do. So when we first got there, they shipped 64 of us from a medium security down to the, the lower security. And nobody was used to this. Like we were used to cells and having a sense of privacy. So we would hang a sheet up every time you used the bathroom. So it was the, the end toilet and you would hang from like basically the wall to this little bar that was like the handicap bar. And the COs would come in there and take it like, what do you think you're doing? Like you're breaking the rules. We're going to write you a charge. And they're writing people charges because they want to use the bathroom, not in front of everybody else. Like that's the mindset of our system. Like let's punish people by making them be embarrassed or making them, you know, use the bathroom in front of everybody else. And I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense to me because that doesn't seem like it's going to make anybody better or somehow reduce recidivism. So we went through this and then you would have guys that would go back there and they would use that as their time to masturbate. And it created problems because other guys would be like, yo, like I'm trying to use it. It just created conflict. So in the dormitory situation, you've got an incredibly inhumane place that denies any kind of meaningful sense of privacy or time to oneself. And this is in an environment where you already don't have meaningful contact with the opposite sex. Like you have officers, and actually at that lower level, I saw more affairs and more relationships between prisoners and staff or prisoners and officers than I had ever seen before. And I don't know if it's because guys are getting ready to go home, so they feel like they're right out the door or what, but there were so many crazy relationships going on that it just blew my mind because it happened up in the medium and the higher levels, but it was more rare. It'd be like, oh yeah, did you hear about so-and-so? It was, it was not a daily thing. Whereas down at that lower level, man, it was like one after the other after the other. So then in the cell institutions, that's where it was a lot easier and it was a lot more reasonable. So you have a cell door that's got a little slot in the middle that's open and that's where you like wave your hand out when you need to get your door opened after count or that's how you kind of yell out the door. But you have a sense of privacy because all you can do is like hang a sheet up over that or hang a towel over that or we would actually make little like cardboard door things where you would hang it, you'd put a popsicle stick glued on the top and then you'd hang it on that. So there was a sense of privacy because when you weren't on lockdown, you would just tell your cellie like, yo man, I need a couple minutes or I need to use the bathroom. He would leave and then you would put the thing up in the door and you could do whatever you need to do. And again, sometimes that's literally just about privacy. That's just about seeing, hey man, I need some quiet. I need to sit here. I need to read. I need to meditate. I need to do something away from somebody else because I'm tired of being packed in and crammed around other people. So it wasn't a negative thing and it was regular. And it was understood. Like I've never once seen a celly be like, yo, you can't use the cell. Like, no, like it's understood. Everybody has their needs and their privacy and you respect that. Now on lockdown or extended stays, that can be a problem because well, you're in there together. And like, if you're on lockdown for two months, well, you, there's not a moment of privacy. And if you've got personal needs, like that leads to a lot of problems. There was a guy up at Sussex who they were, I mean, in Sussex, you're basically locked down all the time. You're in the cell together all the time. And dude was touching himself on the top bunk, nutted off the top bunk and landed on the guy below him, basically. And this was such a problem because dude woke up, found what it was and stabbed this guy so full of holes that there was blood like leaking out under the door. And it's not a good situation. But again, it's a situation created by inhumanely sticking two people in there together and being like, yeah, we don't, we don't care. We don't care about your privacy. Like, we don't care about, like, your basic human needs. And it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, maybe it makes sense from kind of like a money perspective. Like, hey, we can stick as many people as possible in one room, like in a dormitory, and it's cheaper. But does that make sense in the long run of saying, okay, these people are going to be more traumatized or more kind of unhealthy or more maladapted when they get out and more likely to come back and we're going to have to pay for them again rather than just saying, hey, we can treat people humanely, we can model healthy behavior, we can teach them skills, and then they can get out and succeed. We don't have to pay to re-arrest them and retry them and re-incarcerate them. But the other thing that guys would do is they would go to the hole. So at the higher levels, like I said, you're locked in the cell with a celly for basically most of the day. And if you go to the hole, you get a cell to yourself. So it was like, man, I, I can deal with that. Like I can go to the hole and you get this time and all of a sudden it's quiet and you get to read and you get to meditate and you do stuff. And at night they tend to get loud and yell out the door and do things to entertain each other because everybody gets lonely. But 
Man, I used to love it, actually. Like, the first week or two in the hole was, was great. And in the dormitory, that's what a lot of guys would do. They would catch charges regularly just to go back to the hole, just to get that day or week or how many days of peace and quiet and privacy. And then so what the dormitory started doing was doubling people up in the hole. So you're like half the cells in the, in the hole are single cells, half are double cells. And it's like, yo, that's crazy. Like you're in the hole, you're dangerous enough that you need to be like locked away from the rest of the population. And you're gonna put them in there with somebody else? Like this doesn't make sense. It's just like prison. If somebody is a danger to society or to other people, I agree, they need to be separated from society. But if they're not, like, why are we sticking them in a cage? Like, how is that making things better? It was just like over COVID, they released 11,000 federal inmates on basically COVID restrictions, and 17 of them reoffended. So if you think about that, like, all those people weren't a danger to begin with, and we stuck them in prison for, for what reason? Like, how is that benefiting society to spend $40,000 a year to incarcerate these people and take them away from their families and prevent them from being fathers and prevent them from being community members? Like, it just doesn't make sense. And the private time thing is another example of how we kind of take away basic human needs and basic human dignity and then call it normal and act like it isn't a problem. But again, when you see people getting stabbed over the fact that somebody wants some time to masturbate because they can't have like meaningful relationships with the opposite sex. Or when you have issues where fights break out over privacy or over a sense of like, hey, I want to use the shower, but this dude's in here jacking off because he can't get any sense of privacy. Like that's a situation created. It's just like the phones. Like you've got four phones on a wall for 82 prisoners. So if everybody wants to call their family, you got, it just doesn't make sense. It's again, manufacturing drama, manufacturing conflict, where they could just say, hey, people are paying for these phone calls. We're going to put in as many phones as we need to. We're going to put them on tablets. We're going to do it by Wi-Fi. We're going to do something that makes sense and reduces conflict and engages people with the community and with their families and with their support system outside. Or they can continue to make it hard, continue to have scarce resources, continue to say, oh, basically, you got to lie, cheat, and steal to get some privacy. Or you got to lie, cheat, and steal, or you got to fight to be able to get on the phone. We're going to create this drama and then talk about what animals you are and like what bad people you are. But again, when you hold people in inhumane conditions and you expose them to these repeated conflicts that are designed to be conflicts, well, what do you think you're going to get?